Hi everyone, we are back for another Let's Play video, and by we of course I mean with me as always is Corey. Say hi Corey. Hey, how's it going guys? And this time we're going to be playing The King of Dragons, another arcade game by Capcom that's in their bundle on Steam, which is how we're playing it online together. So let me create the game. And then... There's the title screen. We'll just let that play for a second. Okay. Before I invite you. Okay, it just does an attract mode, so let me... You ready? Yep. Alright. Uh, who will you be? Um, let's see... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about these characters, so... All right, uh, well... I'll be, I'll be the dwarf, I guess, or something. Alright, I'll start out as the generic one. Oh, perfect timing. Our, um... <laughs> yeah, you could really see the... Um... The influence. I think this came before Knights of the Round. Right. And yep. you could really see even that voice sample when they go Hoo! I think is actually the same exact voice sample they used in Knights of the Round. Also, similarly, um, we uh, I try to research the games if I've not played them a lot before, before we do a Let's Play. Uh, especially beat-em-up games. A lot of them have hidden moves in them that uh, if you don't know about, like, if you do know about the hidden moves, they can make the game quite a bit more fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, less of a uh, quarter eater back in the day. But um, speaking of Knights of the Round, that was one of those games. It had a really cool blocking and counterattack uh, mechanic in it. And uh, this one has the what seems like the precursor to that, which is much harder to pull off. Which is, um, if you tap in the direction away from the enemy exactly before the enemy's attack will hit you you'll block right um but they do it a little nicer in knights of the round where it's a, you hold attack and tap back um when the enemy is about to hit you and not only will you block but you'll be flashing and vulnerable for a second and then um, if you press attack while you're flashing and vulnerable after a successful block, you'll do a powerful counterattack. Right, uh, yeah, I would say it, this game even has a bit of a, like, slight artistic style leaning in the same direction. Almost like oh, some, maybe some of the same artists worked on it, but, you know, uh, upgraded for Knights of the Round, I yeah. guess. Yeah, exactly. A little more experienced. Um, I think the hardware th the game is on is probably the same. But the artists probably got experience. Maybe they had more memory to spend. Um, yeah. And, and this is definitely know. a primitive game. Like, it, you you kind of just have your attack, and there's not any sort of combos, I guess, or anything. Um, yeah, only the block move, and then... Um, oh, that one was a trap. The block move, and uh, both buttons at the same time. If you... I don't know where the meter is for it, but apparently there's some kind of desperation that certain characters can do at least up oh, did you just do that with both buttons yeah the it could be do the whole like consuming health thing i'm not sure yeah. but uh well you are almost dead so that might explain yep, it yep. but uh i would love to pull off the block at least once but it's so so uh, unintuitive to turn away from the enemy uh when right. they're attacking you yeah, it, it it feels like you're just definitely wanting to um, usually move toward them uh, yeah, exactly. you know, while attacking. Especially this guy, too. This guy's a little limited with range, so... Hopefully we'll have infinite continues. Good old collapsing floor gimmick. <laughs> I want to use that bomb before it goes off screen. Oh, uh, uh, welcome back. Uh, interesting. When you come back in, it's like I didn't understand how the character select works, but right. I, I guess I have to be this guy. I don't know. Oh, interesting. So like you can't switch once you've started, uh, maybe a level or something. Yeah, it could be that the button's sensitive, or maybe I. Hit it too fast or something. I don't know. Let's get that. It's treasure. fine. 
Oh, did they have a uh, leveling up um, thing just like Knights of the Round? It looks like that might be the case. Oh, oh at least between levels they let you pick new characters. Oh, Alright, nice. I'll be uh, the archer this time. I'll be wizard guy. That is his actual name, wizard guy. <laughs> yeah, they didn't bother giving them names. <laughs> You know, even though um, it's definitely on the more um, limited side in terms of beat em ups, it yeah. still plays pretty solid. Like the yeah. controls are tight and everything. Uh, yeah, responsive, smooth. Um, I definitely feel like I want to practice the block, though. I'm a little worried yeah, that I'm... we don't have unlimited continues <laughs> that I'm going to go through all my legs trying to get the block working. Yeah, I. I can't seem to find the right moment to try it out, so... Yeah, and the attack happened so fast, there is a tell for like a half a second before the attack comes out at you, but really not right. much time. I'm a hog, sorry. That's you can funny. never trust archers. <laughs> Another boss? He's not a thief, he's a treasure hunter, right? <laughs> you know, I'm starting, maybe it's because this is very similar to the Dragon Lan to the, not Dragonlance, to the Dungeons and Dragons and Knights of the Round games, but I'm starting to have a um, troubling sensation that maybe we already let's played this game. <laughs> if Didn't if you don't think so, probably not, but uh, like I know I I did really quick test runs with this game in the past thinking we would eventually do it. So, right. but now I'm second guessing. We'll see. I, I, yeah. You don't have a strong memory of this. I mean, I remember us trying it out. Right. Um, but I, I don't know if we played the whole Oops, game. So. You know. Yeah. Because I don't remember a lot of this. Okay, that's that's good. No. Of course, I did it. I hit the thing while the dragon was off screen. Not the best strategy. Definitely go through a lot of lives. Not played this before. I did read in the playthrough guide that there are moves that you cannot block. Probably, you know, things like fire, I assume. Right. Magical attacks. Yeah, from what I remember in the other... Uh, games in this bundle, I think it just gives you unlimited lives or something, uh, right. I guess. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I did just use my uh, both buttons, uh, kind of magic attack. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for me. <laughs> I do appreciate the little map, you know, yeah. it's, uh, in between. Yeah, there, for a uh, an older game of this type, there's definitely quite a bit of polish to it. And like you said, one of the most important things is going to be how smoothly it plays. And, right. Uh, it definitely plays nice and smoothly. But I definitely miss the chance, or I miss, um, that's a thing for you to level up. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I love in beat em up games when there are, <laughs> look at this trap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't remember oh. what those things were called, like in Dungeons and Dragons. The thing that looks like a treasure chest, but it's a monster. Yeah, um... Mimic or something like that. Something, um, yeah, I don't know yeah. for sure. That does sound familiar. Yeah, I'm not sure what the lore of that is. I know they've yeah. they existed in other properties too. That became a, a bit of a trope, I guess. Oh, also, I don't think um, certain characters have the block. I think it's only characters with swords and shields, or maybe only with shields. 
So. Yeah, I, and you said it's just you just tap away What's from it? the enemy just before the attack would hit you. God. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a rough. Uh, mechanic. It's a troll, and they and they they just want people to suffer. It's a it's yeah. a lie. <laughs> That feature does not exist in this game. They're just messing around with people. <laughs> That's a well-drawn nice. dragon tail. Yeah. <laughs> After that giant thick tail, these three heads are very <laughs> underwhelming. Yeah. Look, look how thick that tail is compared to the necks of these. <laughs> yeah. It does not seem like these skinny necks and uh, tiny heads would be attached to that enormous tail. Yeah, it looks like they're they're sort of going for like a hydra, but it's yeah, the the necks are too thin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even for a three-headed dragon. Assuming that's what's supposed to be going on. Uh, also, I can confirm now, like you said, when you continue, it just goes right into the character you had selected, so you can only change character between levels. Right. But yeah, I, I had started oh, to Oh, that was cool. I like how the head falls. Yeah. I had started to say, like, I love beat-em-up games with the extra moves you could do. It really helps you play with more style. Mm -hmm. And it uh, gives a lot more replay value. And, oh, I should say, uh, anyone that's new to our channel uh, and watching this before anything else, Corey and I are both professional pixel artists and indie game developers. And we're actually working on... Uh, retro games, one of which is uh, the same as this general genre, uh, if I can lump this in with beat-em-ups in general, since the kind of game engine is identical, it's just whether or not the characters are drawn to be holding weapons and to be wizards and stuff instead of uh, street fighters or whatever. Um, but uh, that's something I'm really trying to do um, with that game we're making. Metro Siege is... Um, all right, I, I'll be the cleric now. Uh, in Metro Siege, I'm really trying to put a very uh, robust fighting mechanic and a lot of moves in so that uh, you, there's a lot of replay value and you can swap up. Um, did I just turn someone into frogs or did I just release frogs? That oh, I should have paid more attention. So, yeah. uh, no, it's fine. Um... I was just like noticing. So when you level up, you're leveling up the that the particular guy. character. Okay, yeah. so you could you could sort of strategize. I kind of like that. Uh, it's a neat feature that you don't see much in these kind of games. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I hope it continues. Like if you stop using that character and then pick him again in a later level, I hope it. Oh, I I did the block accidentally. Yeah, it does because like. When I got this guy, it said he was level three, and then I leveled nice. up to four. Nice. So I, okay. I guess you could technically keep use one guy up. the whole yeah. time and you know max him out or right. something. Ooh, these guys have a grab. I don't even think the any of the player characters have a grab move. It didn't mention it in the playthrough, as far as I recall. No, it's it it definitely needs a little more. Uh, you know, going on with the fighting, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was saying. In Metro Siege, not only uh, did I uh, does in general does it have more moves than Streets of Rage Two, which was kind of to me the benchmark. It's one of the best, if not the best, beat 'em up ever made. But um, I also took that really nice block and counter attack uh, mechanic from Knights of the Round and made a slight variation of it. Um, right. So. I'm sure I'll, while I'm editing this, sneak in some footage of Metro Siege so people can check it out. Definitely. Yeah, um... Yeah, and this Capcom bundle works very smoothly for multiplayer. It's very nice. Yeah, um, online, yep. I'm I think we're about out of games, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's one game left that, uh, obviously, the, uh, the one we're least interested in uh, yeah. yeah, it could be a great game, but uh, it didn't uh, visually capture our interest as much as these other ones. Um, but speaking of th this kind of genre, the other uh, retro game we're working on is called Damon Claw, and much more in keeping with these kind of knights and warriors and 
uh, monsters and stuff like that. I'll sneak some footage of that in there too. Um, but that's a one-player side-scrolling action game more in keeping with... Uh, Slightly like Castlevania, but more like uh, a game most people, at least in the U.S., probably never heard of, called Black Belt on the Sega Master System. A bit like Altered Beast, uh, but much faster action. <laughs> um, and uh, much more sophisticated um, combat. There's a lot more you can do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's... it's games like this are interesting because it definitely feels like they were, you know, they were working on their engine, which seems to be yeah. the same one that oh, they yeah. just kept expanding on exactly. and making like basically all the games in this bundle and it evolved, do you know what I mean, as yeah. it went along? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, it does take, the desperation does take your, um, a little bit of your help. We just tested that actually paid attention to the, my health meter while I did it. I feel Ouch. like the dwarf, uh, you know, to get into art criticism, mm -hmm. it, I feel like he's a little too small. Like he could have been, yeah. you know, like a, a little, little bit or exactly. something, you know. Which is actually interesting, because way too often they make the opposite mistake when they represent a small character, and they right. it's like they want all that pixel real estate to get in enough detail. So right. like in games like the uh, Street Fighter 2, back in the day, if Chun-Li were to actually stand up, she'd be probably the tallest character in the game. Yeah, right. She's yeah. absolutely enormous. So, you know, not even talking so about her legs. thighs. <laughs> yeah, as they evolved yeah. throughout the series and got just ridiculously distorted. Um, she must have been the initial model for that um, Vanillaware game. Uh, what was that game called? Um, the one that used the kind of paper puppet uh, animation style. Um, oh, I can't think of the name right now. I'll, I'll definitely splice in some... Uh, character art for that game and maybe some footage of that game while I'm editing this let's play um, right the name will come to me eventually oh it's a trap <laughs> oh I did the block again accidentally it almost felt like it's the opposite like you tap toward the enemy the moment that would be so much more intuitive Oh yeah, it could be the whatever guide. Oh, wait, I think you might be right. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> uh, it could be whatever guide you were reading was was wrong or something. I don't know. Or I uh, misread it. It's wouldn't be impossible. Yeah, let's see. Oh no, it, it it does seem like. Okay, I kind of get it now. It's really just meant to protect you. Yeah, exactly. If you're just running away from the enemy. You know what I mean? Like but it has to be close, that but... second. Right. Because I was just walking away, and like he yep. just he does it naturally, you know? Yeah, but it's coincidentally you had just started walking away, because if you've been walking away for a while, it will not initiate the right. block. It's, a, it's an odd feature, you, yep. you know? Or at least the way they did it, but... Yeah. Yeah, I definitely prefer the Knights of the Round and therefore the Metro Siege Way. Not that the Metro Siege Way is exactly, but it's extremely similar. Now this guy <clears> is <throat> like a, I don't know, like a Disney character or something. Yeah, he does. button mash the bosses yeah that's another thing we're really trying to do in metro siege is really reward the player not only in gameplay but visually when the player does play with style and does something right um like getting a get in a really nicely timed counter attack or fancy footwork evasion and coming back in and hitting the enemy while their guard is down because they're kind of still stuck in the follow through of their attack 
Right. Whereas in games like this, it's mostly just line up and button mash and learn some very basic patterns. Yeah, we're definitely going to be probably moving on in terms of maybe co-op games. Uh, yeah. Some Neo Geo territory and stuff yeah. like that. Because uh, I think the Capcom, we played the ones that matter, I think, here. And yeah. uh, this was, this was, this is a neat game but it's not you know like a classic or anything i guess yeah i had to my knowledge never seen or heard of this back in the day in the right. arcade um whereas there are some hidden gems that a lot of people um may have never seen or heard that are actually really worth a uh, a watch or a playthrough um like there's a a neo geo game that we're looking into um playing soon called uh sengoku 3 which is um you know was for the neo geo and neo geo arcade uh, cabinets and just such leaps and bounds beyond the previous other two sengoku games in quality especially visual uh, the pixel art is really beautiful in that game yeah i remember you've you've talked about that one a good bit and and that was one like growing up and everything i was definitely less familiar with uh you know yeah. i i know of the popular neo geo stuff but in terms of like the good uh brawlers and beat-em-ups on that mm -hmm. system i was far less familiar with like any i guess snk is it yeah. is snk yep. right? mm -hmm. uh, okay. i'm almost certain yeah yeah pretty sure yeah they oh, nice. There were many ways they outshined Capcom, uh, yeah. but didn't quite get the market share, I guess. Uh, or <laughs> Look whatever. at that skull guy's eyes. <laughs> Sorry about that. It, no, just his big, <laughs> tall eyes looked like he was surprised. It was very funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I spotted something cool with the uh, archer. Uh, there was an enemy archer, and he shot an arrow at me, and I turned around and shot his arrow out of the air and blocked his arrow before it could hit me. It was pretty badass. So yeah, they don't. there's not a lot of moves and stuff, but they thought of some decent little things that really improve things like that, like the ability to block an arrow that's coming at you. Yeah, I suppose uh, since they kept the combat relatively simple and you know like what you can do that sort of freed them up a little bit to do extra little things like even this yeah. spider enemy is not something you would normally see in this genre you know like yeah. dropping down like that yeah. so it is it does have a lot of neat little s surprises i suppose yeah you know? this is also interesting in that it's a boss fight but it's not a singular boss right uh, it's a whole nest of giant spiders yeah, that was pretty fun. Oh, I like the fact that they had them all fall at once. Yeah, you kind of yeah. get the... It's more dramatic than if they each died one at a time. You wouldn't right. get that sense of, oh yeah, I just defeated, oh, living tree. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you would think he'd have a different vernacular, a way of speaking, <laughs> since he's probably ancient, given the size of them. <laughs> Oh, I'll be this guy again. Who basically looks like he just he just jumped over into Knights of the Round after this game, or <laughs> yeah. he looks like uh, one of those guys. Yeah, I'm definitely noticing a lot of um, art similarities between um, this and Knights of the Round in the environments as well as the mm -hmm. character sprites. So. I would be shocked if it wasn't a lot of the same uh, art team. And definitely the same core code base for, right. for all, if not, if not, for most, if not all of these games. Oopsie, wasted that one. I think you can bump into those and push them in the direction you want to go if you want to use them later, which is kind of fun. Nice. That is the biggest strawberry I've ever seen.
Oh yeah, uh, speaking of knocking things out of the air, that's one of the fun things in um, Damon Claw, talking about how it has some really nice um, subtlety and different options to handle the same situations. Um, there's enemies that can throw projectile weapons at you, and you can either roll under them, you can uh, per uh, perfectly timed physical attack can knock it out of the air uh, instead of getting hit by it. Um, you could jump over them, or you can actually land down on top of it from the air uh, and take out that thrown weapon that way. So there's just lots of different gameplay options. Um, yeah, it's it's always every time I re uh, I'm testing it out like. And I like go get to what the like the level one sub bosses or whatever. Like it's yeah. always fun to, you know, find a new way to defeat them. I guess yeah, exactly. you know as they come in, uh, you can really mix it up every time you do it. And and that's stuff like the landing on the, you know, on the blade. Like I don't know that I've seen that too much in games. You know, yeah. so it. it it's definitely something that would happen in real life with a guy yeah. that big, you know? <laughs> yeah. Big metal boots. Right. Um, of course, usually they wouldn't be so agile they could jump high up in the air enough to land down on a thrown weapon, but this guy's agile. Yeah, he's... Um, he's uh, the he's, guy that... He's uh, game agile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I gotta say, like, there wasn't a lot to that boss in gameplay, but I liked the overall concept and his visual design. Mm -hmm. Of the guy riding the uh, the dinosaur type thing, yeah, or dragon type thing. That was pretty. Oh, we're on the wrong ones. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been really stupid of us. There we are, like constantly overlapping the wrong one, like trying to grab each other's. Um... It's it's definitely odd because it's one of those things. It's an upgrade that only your character can get. So I, yeah. I guess having it sitting there on the ground is kind of a moot point. But yeah. you know. I like that fake perspective on this arch here, with the part yeah. that goes over you that was nicely handled. It can always be, uh, let's see if I could push this, like, yep, you, I pushed it the wrong way, there we go, but you can indeed say, keep it going this way and then use it when you want to. Yeah, it just generates toads, that's interesting. This is a good example, too, of, you oh. know, stonework and bricks without doing the brick-itis. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you know, yep. without it being too, uh... Exactly. Yeah, you've got to make a, uh, or one of us has to make that a clip of that. I think yeah. you talked about Perkaitis in the Knights of the Round Let's Play we did. Right. And, uh, so once there's uh, um, a clip video of that, we'll try to link back to that here. Um, right. But in the meantime, people could watch the full Forensic Pixology or the Knights of the Round Let's Play where we talk about Perkaitis. Um but that's, that's what Corey calls it when there's way too much uh, strong contrast and delinea delineation, if I can speak, uh, between each um, brick so that you're not seeing the wall as a wall. Like each right. individual brick is really screaming for your attention. It's sort of a subcategory of uh, confetti syndrome, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's like... Which we do have a clip video, in fact, two clip videos for. So we'll link to them uh, back to back when, when I'm putting this video up on YouTube. But yeah, uh, it, it's a shame too, and this does go back to development time and how much memory. Even back in the day, memory was very expensive, so they had to be careful even in arcade machines. But uh, he was a cool boss, but now he's just like a generic sub boss we've seen several times since then, just yep. recolored. Uh, which is always kind of disappointing, and the um, he would have been so much more polished if he had a like a three frame turn animation because the dragon he rides is so big and wide when he yeah. turns and it just pops to facing the other way. It's just I feel like you know. yeah, reusing uh, something that is supposed to be special is yeah. never. It's like got the opposite effect of. Yeah, it's what supposed I to be special, happen, exactly. which is you get something that is a precursor to the big thing. Yeah. You know that and you build up to the special event and then you just that special event is a one off, you know, that's yeah. should be the progression, but you know, in a perfect world, I guess. Oh, you know this what? This guy's pretty neat. 
I was just wondering if there was a way for me to switch what kind of weapon I'm using or whatever. Like, I see I have five necklaces. I'm not sure what that means. Um, or amulets or whatever the heck is in my inventory. And I have five wands. Oh, I guess that's the power level. So that amulet yeah. represents my armor class, I think. Yeah, it's, it, I guess they needed something there since he didn't have a shield or yeah, exactly. any armor as well. Well, at least it seems like the... Um, there are unlimited continues, so we'll be able to make it the really game. I came back just in time <laughs> for the end of the level. Yep, not sophisticated, <laughs> but a pretty that that portrait is really nice. Yeah. Just speaking, like his face is excellently drawn and animated. The talking guy there. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly small and like almost hiding under the dialogue box, but the actual pixel art itself was very nice. Yeah, uh, I think I like the archer the most. The uh, the long distance um, fighting is kind of fun. Yeah, I I feel like the wizard is like a lesser version of the archer or something. Yeah, exactly. Like he's not quite as good. It's kind of funny how the archer is called uh, elf. Um, right. <laughs> like it makes sense to call a dwarf a dwarf, I guess. Right. But. Archer is just a g general fighting class. It's kind of weird. Like, the warrior is just called warrior as far Can't as I know. Can't you see the one pixel ear? Uh, elf ear? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can, actually, yes. Um, but you'd have to really be paying attention. Those were some extremely tall mummies. And giant skeletons. They're certainly not human. Look how big. Yeah, they... Uh... The size of those on skulls. On the cartoony side of yeah. the skeletons. That is an interesting point to make about um, paying attention, going back to the Chun-Li thing, paying attention mm -hmm. to scale. Right. Uh, and it is very possible, especially back in the day, um, a lot of times when you had multiple artists working on the same game, they're not seeing the other art other people are making frequently enough, and they're not even saying their art in the full context of the game as they develop it, so you can end up with some pretty striking discrepancies in scale and even rendering and coloring style uh, in certain games where they don't have uh, the time, budget, or very strong art direction to make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen. Right. In fact, I think I think we were having a conversation not too long ago, and I was showing you the uh, the Ducktales remake. And right. How yeah. I thought even though the quality was good, it just it felt like it was missing a lot of its original kind of uh, soul visually. Like it just got a little too like there's that difference between something really being lovingly done um, and something just being professionally done within budget right you know what i mean right and um yeah there's there's aspects of it that are really nice and then yeah. there's things that feel it's like you said like there were architectural it, it, there was an array and... of artists working on yeah. it that maybe yeah. never achieved that cohesion that could have happened you know yeah exactly um, and i'm specifically yeah. remembering that scene i think inside the money bin Right. Yeah. Or like in the office outside of the actual vault where Scrooge goes swimming all the time in this gold. But there was a massive scale issue with the entire room. Like the characters right. look tiny compared to Upswitch. Quick. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Oh. See, that's what I was afraid of. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's... Um, like it, the room was beautifully done. The characters were beautifully done. But the characters were completely off in scale to the room, which actually reminds me of the, um, yeah, I'll keep being the archer, in fact, the elf. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I haven't been paying attention enough to know if the character sprites change when you level up. I don't think so, or at least it's nowhere near as obvious as it was with Knights of the Round. Right, I think, like, for example, like, I think the hits are stronger like i think that guy's arrow is beefier now yes but oh, i yeah. don't know if it's doing anything different necessarily. yeah the attacks and their armor class like how many hits they take before they die that's definitely going up right but the look of the character itself i don't think it's changed at all right oh you mean like that yeah like their their uniform their armor their head uh oops uh yeah i don't think so uh, they, they pretty much 
just have the same suits. Exactly. That's always... That's one of those things that uh, is costly budget-wise. Because, you know, like, oh, yeah. usually the, the player whole set. has the most animations yep. out of any character in the game. So, And you need the entire set of animations for the character to be... Uh repainted over or drastically changed which is actually why knights of the round is so impressive yeah. uh you know like as a game um yeah to me the funnest um level progression is uh percival because he starts out with a full head of hair and ends up completely bald by the time he's fully leveled yeah. up. yeah i do find it interesting that like this game it seems like it's a mishmash of like a lot of games we've already we we know. Yeah. You know, it's 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 almost like a like an experiment or something that they did just to yeah. Well, yeah, like, I mean back then a little then, lower budget, but you know, yeah. uh, still kind of a fun experiment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And back then kind of every game was an experiment to some degree. Right. Unless I mean sometimes even back then there were some real kind of soulless copycat games. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, this does have the block. I don't know if it's the first game to have it, but it's got to be one of the earlier ones to have it. And I'm seeing some really nice little unique ideas and um, uh, fun stuff going on with some of these boss fights and stuff. Oh, and, and being I, able to push those power-ups, that's kind of fun. And, like, the and way I, you and I do break think, it open. Yeah, and if we did have a third character in this one... Yeah, I do appreciate that, you know, like the scale of the characters may seem a little small, but with a third player, it makes sense. It's just you right. Know, like it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially since there's long range weapons involved and stuff like that. Right. For a three three player game, to me, this is really the sweet spot of uh, character size. And that way, when you do make a big boss, it could really feel big without being ridiculously cluttering the screen. Exactly. You know, it yeah. leaves you room for that sense of scale and just movement for the gameplay. And it's got the kind of golden axe thing. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you yeah shoot the little thief guys to uh, get stuff. Yeah, it was like they they wanted to make you know their own golden axe, uh, mm -hmm. you know, instead of Sega, but it was like. They, they they definitely made the point to like well we got to make it unique and different you know uh, in yep. its own way so yeah going back to scale since the skeletons are here <laughs> like yeah. it's very possible the artist was told to make human skeletons and they just did it within the oh well, okay a sprite can be x pixels high and x pixels wide right and then you end up with something that's like it looks good and it might get in, uh, approved of by the art director looking at just that thing and then they get it in game and they might not even notice or think, oh, it's too late. You know, it's too big, but um, that's fine. No one will notice. And sometimes that's how you I end think... up with giant Chun-Li's in games. Right. And I think the reason they stand out so much is they're, uh, you know, even though some things are abstracted a little bit in this game, they just look the most, you know, it's like almost every other humanoid type fits the right proportions yeah you know? exactly um yeah it, you know if they could have maybe got away with it if they you know added like horns or something you know to make it seem like it's not a human alien but yeah or a human uh, skeleton but or you know, like meaning like it could be like an alien or a monster or creature but i, I don't yeah even that would look kind of goofy still i think yeah yeah but, you know yeah it also would just look a little more menacing if they weren't so bright white, the skeletons. Give them yeah. a nice off yellow. Um, yeah, they're so clean and yeah. uh, bleached or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they look like a Halloween uh, uh, decoration instead of uh, anything that was a uh, rotting corpse. Right. Ever. Um, but yeah. We're definitely seeing that guy in the back of the dinosaur <laughs> way too much. He he just serviced yeah. uh, a few minutes ago as another boss yet again. Um, just a way to extend the gameplay and eat more tokens. 
But yeah. Oh, going back to um, scale issues and backgrounds, the, another famous one, if you've ever noticed, was uh, in Final Fight when you're on the subway train. Um, the uh, the characters look tiny compared to the subway, especially there's the um, the things you're supposed to hold on to. Um, right. Back in the old days in uh, subway trains, there were these loopy kind of handles in some of them. Um, it does would hang get down. tricky sometimes with the with this genre, yeah. like when you've got that open floor space where yep. you can move up and down, but the character has to remain the same size. Yeah. Yet you want things in the back to look a little smaller yep. than things at the bottom. Like it, you, you do have to um, cheat and uh, yeah. Yeah, you sort of have to break rules, and uh, it can play with your per sense of perspective sometimes. Absolutely. So I'm I'm a little forgiving sometimes, but I know yeah. what you mean when there's like an obvious thing that's. Well, know, that's the thing, out. right? They could yeah. have left out those hangy down things, and then it wouldn't have made it so obvious. Like, oh my god, right. I'm supposed to reach up and grab that. I would need to, my character would need to look the equivalent of nine feet tall <laughs> to be able to right. reach that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I managed to pull it off in the uh, subway level in Metro Siege. Like the scale looks a lot more accurate, and right. you could still walk around in the subway so but i did you know i did not plus i want a metro siege to feel a little more ageless like a, you can't pinpoint the era that this story is taking place in right i don't even know if that thing's yeah it is hurting me Jeez, just noticed my uh meter was draining yeah i remember like when i was working on various like asking early questions uh, about Metro Siege's yeah. lore, you know, I was like, "Well, are yeah. we going for a time period?" Or, and I, I think that was the conclusion: is uh, try to avoid it being an obvious. Yeah, uh, could know. be late eighties, could be nineties, could be in the right. two thousands. You just don't know for sure. But so it's making those decisions where no fashion is hyper, like you would only, you know, no one's right. wearing neon leg warmers. <laughs> And, no, like uh, there's not a, like a DeLorean sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. The cars look fairly uh, mo modern, like the police cars, but generic enough to not be like, oh, that's definitely a car from the, uh, you know, late 2000s or anything like that. And then, like, you're intentionally never going to see a scene with a modern cell phone in it or anything that's going to pinpoint the date that this uh, story is unfolding in. But at the same time, you may want to avoid the phone booth. Like. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly <laughs> right. Because that would also date it. Like, the, yeah, yeah. they were completely gone by a certain time. No, I think a giant box with a wired phone in it is way better than <laughs> carrying your device around. Yeah, it was really inconvenient for Superman <laughs> when they uh, got rid of all of them. Right. Is this, I guess this is the last guy, huh? Uh, uh, it looks like it certainly might be, huh? He looks like a character out of uh, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> the he head, does. yeah. Wearing Doctor Strange's uh, robe reminds me how in um, uh, what is it, Shinobi or Return of Shinobi or whatever on the Mega Drive? The uh, in the original version, you fought Batman and Spider Man. Mm -hmm. I, you, it's, he's he's gonna morph into something else, right? That's what yeah. I'm. I had the same <laughs> thought. I'm hoping so, but I have a feeling based on how <laughs> he'll morph into one of those guys on the back of the dinosaurs <laughs> right. or the dragon, whatever it is. That would be awesome. I, I'd still rather have that than him not morphing into anything. Oh, yeah. But that that Although would be he's very doing funny. Tons of damage, like he's killing yeah. us very easily. So. Yeah, his name is Brisbane uh, Quarter Muncher. Right. Yeah. So, the the famed evil wizard Brisbane uh, Quarter Muncher. Yeah, it's just. So it is. So I guess the meter isn't really your health, right? Because it's like, it's kind of like a one hit death thing. Oh no, you definitely can take a few hits from minor things, but this guy is definitely... I'm just wondering if the meter is just your magic power. I don't know. I... No, it seems it... to be your health, but if you do your desperation thing, it takes that away too from the same meter. Right. Which is pretty typical. 
Oh, well, they're letting us level up. Is Does it matter? Oh. Is that it? Oh, no, there's more of it. Oh, and now we're just going to a cave in the woods, so... Yeah. No, not a cave in the woods. The... Oh, right. Cave, cave in the woods. <laughs> right. Trademark. Yeah, the <laughs> cave in the woods. Not to be confused with any generic... Oh, this reminds me of the uh, Fishman. Nicely designed and nice and bright. Uh, but it reminds me of the ones in uh, Rastan Saga 3. And how we were saying, for that kind of creature, they look oddly big. Right. And these have the same... Uh, you know, it's a design choice in this case, it might be. But... Uh... Yeah, I mean... There's it's... no law saying they couldn't be this big. Right, right. It's not as bad since they're fish guys you know and not meant to be humans but yep. maybe uh, uh i guess they're they're new enemies though right like yeah it's interesting we got this far and there's still some new guys so that's yeah that's a plus right? definitely yeah i went in a big uh um, verbal tirade in uh, the rest and saga three playthrough <laughs> about uh how they kind of spill their whole load so to speak uh in the first like two minutes of that game it's like oh we made all these cool enemies let's show them pretty much all of them in the first level right uh and then you know going back to that whole concept of themes i think actually this game has done a pretty decent um yeah a not... better job for sure of that i mean they've got their generic thugs that yeah they bring back quite often but that's pretty normal for a yeah. lot of games uh so yeah they try it seems like they're trying at least to thematically uh yeah at least keep introducing new yeah. stuff and um nothing has seemed really out of place but games get really good when there's a very cohesive theme to a given level that really helps each level really stand out from each other and it, it basically forces the game designer to keep introducing new things per level yeah so even if they only have a certain budget to make a certain number of enemies and stuff they can still <laughs> look at that face of the dragon up there that's awesome that was pretty uh comical. No. very unhappy <laughs> It's like he stubbed his toe, like getting out of the tub or something. Yeah, oh, he funny. stepped on a Lego. Yeah. Parents right. will know what I mean. He stepped on a Lego. Yeah. That's his stepped on a Lego face. Uh, I did that. Oh, with Legos man. As a kid. Um, I didn't think... have socks on. Just, you know. Yeah, I think, the, right in. I think the only thing my father hated more than stepping on a Lego was Play-Doh getting crushed into the carpeting in the living room. <laughs> Very purple bricks here. Right. Yeah. But hey, at least they're keeping the color palettes very varied between levels and nice and vibrant. It doesn't have the uh, gray syndrome that I think you talked about also before in a couple of our uh, playthroughs and forensic pixologies. The idea of even if you are doing a level like in a game like this, there's a big threat of it's going to be a lot of castles, a lot of stone buildings. Right. And yeah. everything can just be really gray and and bland and they've done a yeah. nice job here really making nice colorful environments and uh varying it up quite a bit between levels yeah i agree it's it's uh, a game of wide variety i think yeah they... except in gameplay that's the problem <laughs> not a lot of variety in moves and we've been seeing these slime enemies since level one most yeah. of the generic ones and and it is it is starting to get in that okay how long is the game you know yeah. like like you're starting to feel like they've repeated enough stuff where um i'm wondering if there's a, like when this last boss is or how many levels there exactly really are, so yeah yeah i've been speaking about that a few times in our later videos latest videos where too many beat-em-ups it's my favorite genre but too many overstay their welcome if you can't come up with really interesting new things to keep the gameplay mixed up and keep the player excited there's no need to make the game take like an hour plus to beat like right. a game that stays fun the whole way through and is 15 20 30 minutes 
has so much more like I don't want to start a game because I want to play it and then a half hour 45 minutes through I'm going oh my god like I don't actually want to keep playing in order to, because it's fun I just feel like I wasted this 45 minutes if I don't play it all the way through it shouldn't right. feel like an obligation or a burden to beat the game yeah because I was I was looking at the map and I was like well where are we going now but we are yeah. it does look like this is like Final Castle yeah floating. I mean world something there has to be a limit i mean you know you can't get to the core of the earth that would be too hot and the gravity would <laughs> <laughs> destroy right. us so we've we've got to be near the end now yeah it's looking like you know, is this a dragon sword of gold or gold. just a sandy beach uh, this is gold okay or is it sand here we go Oh, the funnest thing about the Archer, by the way, is you... Oh, they even have in the engine, this is clear, it's the same engine as Knights of the Round. When you press the fire button during a cinematic dialogue, it speeds everything up. <laughs> yeah. Um, even when you're moving around, which is odd. <laughs> oh, did you see that? The the uh, encased in fire body, a uh, generic body, just like in Final Fight, when you get hit by the fire. That's a, an effect Capcom uh, perfected yep. early on. I do the same thing in um, Metro Siege for an electrocuted effect. I'll give him credit. If this is the yeah. last boss, it's it's, it's dramatic enough for a last boss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With the limbs and stuff, the head yeah. still feels a little small, uh, you know, compared yeah. to the body. But you know, nice. Ah, wow. they flipped yeah. it. They flipped the tiles. So that's really cute. Nice use of uh, a built-in feature that yep. most old consoles and arcade boards had. They could flip the tile graphics and sprite. So they could mix up the gameplay a bit and make the boss fight much more dramatic, even though he's yeah. this big. Yeah, when you try this game, you, d you don't expect much, but it, yeah. it really had a lot of yeah, it neat, neat bosses and stuff. Yeah, guess, seriously, you know? it, raised, yeah. Uh, it, it uh, surpassed my expectations from the initial uh, level. And just right. the way the game looks. Uh, also, going back to that whole thing about flipping a wide character, how smart were they? They made the dragon fly off screen to turn around. So imagine if he just turned around and popped that whole giant body. Right. <laughs> it would look so silly. And they came up with a way to use the same exact art, make it look like he flies off screen to turn around. And yep. it's a brilliant effect that added the kind of cinematic flair didn't introduce any new memory of any new giant graphics for having him turn around or even fly since you can't see his wings. Oh, and right. they animated his tail every once in a while. Very, very nicely yeah, done. It's, very it's... nicely done final, assuming this is the final boss. Yeah, technically very impressive for its time, you know. Yeah. A very low memory usage final boss that actually they just did had great ideas to put good use to the what they could put in the game but yeah i was i was going to say the cool thing about him the archer is you can jump jump and then turn around and keep shooting while you're jumping in the other direction like a strafe kind of a jump strafe oh, it's nice. very gratifying you like jump up away from an enemy and get three or four nice shots in his face as you're gaining distance it's uh very fun too bad if there were a few more things to the gameplay mechanic. Uh, to me, this would probably rival Knights of the Round. Um, I I agree, and in a way, I sort of like that it's a more generic medieval theme. So I think it allowed them to be a little more creative. Yeah, it's got the Dungeons and, and Dragons thing instead of yeah. just Knights and Warriors. There's very little supernatural. They had to go to the like mechanical robot thing in Knights of the Round, right. if I recall. Nope, there we go. Cool. Is he going to have any kind of ending, uh, death sequence? He flew up again. We'll see. Oh, yeah, uh, cute. Good enough. Yeah, decent like, enough. Clearly they were dealing with memory constraints, but they did a very nice job. I like the tongue hanging out. In the, uh, <laughs> that's very cute. Nicely done. Kudos to the art team. They did a great right. job with the final boss. Uh, nice little ending. Standing by uh, the... The cave in the forest. Yes. Or wherever, <laughs> wherever it is. 
Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, the game surpassed my uh, my expectations. It definitely, yeah. it's not. Uh, it's a lot more fun in two player, and if it had some extra moves and stuff, it would be way more fun. Mm -hmm. But really, not bad, especially for the time it was released and conceptually and stuff. Like I said, if they had the same kind of budget caliber and caliber of art and stuff as Knights of the Round, I think I would like this in that blocking counter mechanic. I think right. I'd like uh, this game more than Knights of the Round. Well, and I will say, like, even though we we started feeling that fatigue of okay, mm. when's the game? And that was like the level right before the last yeah, it wasn't bad. So like, it was it was almost timed perfectly. If we had a third player, it might be like the perfect, you know, like playthrough mm. time, you know. Yeah. But and also just enough, like this is really cute. And credits, they've got fairies mm -hmm. bringing in the letters and then the dragon punches and shatters the text away. Like <laughs> yeah. those little touches and it's reusing the same memory. Like that's badass. Like last time he punched and shattered the, the words and that time he blew it away with his fire breath. Yeah, lots of arcades, uh, they didn't put a lot into the endings because exactly. they didn't care because most people would never make it or, uh, yeah. you know. They, or walk away from the machine or whatever. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, like you could tell this team cared. You know what I mean? Like they really, yeah. really put in that little extra bit. Enter your name. I will be bu bu bu. Oh no, I'll be ba. There we go. Ba and ka. <laughs> All right, well, we might as well end the video there. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching. And uh, we'll be back some other time soon with some uh, other games. If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description, and we'll see you soon.